Can you bore your own engine block? We're going to find out. What we've got here is a Jeep, inline Jeep engine that uh, cylinder bores are wore on it and uh, we want to make them bigger. We want to fit some new pistons into this block. And uh, here we have an original piston which if you take a micrometer and mic this piston up you'll find out and if you mic the bore, you can also mic the bore but if you mic the piston, it, you'll find out that it's a standard bore, original piston from the factory. And the stock bore on that engine was 3.875 inches. Now we're going to go, we're going to fit some 30 over pistons in this engine. And uh, use some real nice hyper eutectic pistons. You can see there where it uh, shows 30 over. And uh, so what you do is you uh, mic the piston, and in this case the piston is two thousandths short of 30 over. And that's your bore clearance. You want to run, uh, I'm actually going to bore this engine uh, about a half a thousandth tight from that. Uh, if you take, uh, I'm going to bore it uh, I'm going to bore it uh, 1 thousandths, I'm sorry, under. If you go 30 over, 3.875, the new, the new nominal bore would be 3.905. But uh, I'm going to bore it 3.904. And then I'm going to hone a half a thou out of it. So I will be, my final bore will be 3.9045 which will give me one and a half thousandths piston clearance. Now I've already cut in the, in the first bore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in two cuts. The first cut I've already done in the cylinder and I've bored that cylinder to 3.895. I took 20 thousandths out of it the first time and I'm going to take nine thousandths out of it the second time. And the way this works is this is a uh, this is a Winona Van Norman uh, this is a Winona Van Norman setup. It's a triple seven they call this boring bar. It's an old girl, but she works good. And uh, the way you do it is uh, you get your uh, like I say you get all your setup on there, and then this is your cutting your cutting tool holder. And that's an indexible, indexable carbide. It's got six sides to it, but they last a long time. I mean, I've, I've done uh, a whole V8 engine on one, one index there. Um, you, you, you put it in your tool holder, and this tool holder is part of the uh, Winona Van Norman set. It comes with all these goodies here. These are the shoes, which I'll get into in a second. These are the shoes for the, the guide for the bore. Uh, these are all the old original tool holders which were uh, carbide and uh, if I was more skilled at this I would learn how to grind these carbides but uh, uh, I have not learned how to do that yet and uh, with these modern cutting tools that are now available that are being made in the aftermarket I don't really need to mess around trying to learn how to grind carbide. Uh, this is a facing tool that I bought that's made specially for this for this uh, boring bar and this will allow me to face off the top of the block and you use that if you're putting sleeves in a block you got you got you leave the sleeve up a little bit and then you face that sleeve off with that uh, facing tool but um, anyway that's the old these these are for a bigger bore I just took these out because I had bored a uh, uh, a bore that was over four inches. These these are the longer shoes, uh, number number fours, and I just put in number. I just put in some. Oh no, I'm sorry. I took these out. These are number threes, and I just put in some number twos. These are number fours. I believe this boring bar will go up to about five inches or five and a half inches. It goes quite large, and those shoes, they go, they go in here. There's four of them, and they screw on. And these are the guides, and. What it is is it's got this 
it's got this knob here that you rotate and maybe you can see it that I don't know if you can see that that shoe moving in and out it's moving out now but well anyway what 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 you do is when you get it started you back it up like that and then once this once this goes down into the bore which we'll see here in a couple minutes when it gets down to about there then you wind it out. You wind it out until them shoes are touching that bore and then you flip this little lock lever and that holds them, that, that holds those shoes out against that bore and the reason you do that is because it needs the, it needs the, it needs the stability when it, when it goes down in that bore, that long arm needs that stability down there in that bore to keep it centered. So uh, we're going to go ahead and 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 I've got my cutting I've got my cutting tool set here now. I've got it set, and what you do is you put it in this special holder, and then I, I set this to 3.904. I don't know if you could see it, but I got it set right there. At that's the final bore. It's a really nice little tool holder, and we just take this and we're going to put it in the boring bar. I'm used to doing this with my other hand, and you make sure it's it's all the way back. I think you heard it there, click. And then you just run this little set screw up on the side. You just snug it. You don't have to wrench it down hard. You just you just snug it. And now we're ready for our final bore. And um, what we're going to do here is we'll bring it down about there. Make sure my shoes are backed up, which I've already done. Then we flip it on. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to engage. We're going to engage this feed right here. You see that feed start to turn? That's going to bring that cutting tool down into the block. And there it goes. It's starting to cut. She's taking about 9,000 salt right now. That's the final bore when I'm done. And uh, I got this set on slow. I could run it faster. It does have two speeds. It's got a high and a low over here. Uh, they say you can run the. They say you can run it on uh, high. Anything under, I believe it is four inches, and we are just under four. I could probably speed it up, but I'm in no rush, so I'm just going to let her go. And it only takes it only takes a few minutes to get to the bottom. And actually, if you want to hang out, we can watch it. We can watch it go the whole way. Uh, okay, now our shoes are down. See, our shoes are down here below the surface. So now I can start to wind this out. I can bring that out until I just feel a tiny bit of resistance there. That's it. Just like that. And that puts some shoes out against that bore. Oh, there's four of them, by the way. There's one here, there's one, there's one over here, and there's one in the back. So there's four of them that keep that bore on center. And we just flip this little lever here. What this lever does is it catches into a into a notch there. I don't know if we can see that, but it just keeps it from rattling backwards. But it's not going to move. You, you probably don't even really need to flip that lever, but they just put it there just in case. And um, while that thing's while that thing's doing its thing, we can walk over here to the rocket stove and take a look. Here's a 4.7 Chrysler that's got to be bored. This was a uh, junkyard engine, had a little rust in it, so we're going to clean that one up before we put it together. We'll put some 20 over pistons in that one. And uh, we'll go over here and check our rocket stove and see how we're doing. Looks like we could use some, looks like we could use some pellets. And we got a little fire going through there, but it's, it's 70 degrees. So we don't need a lot. We don't need a lot of. We don't need a lot of heat today. It's 70 inside the building. So I'm just gonna feed some pellets into my hopper here, just to make sure we got enough pellets for a while. Then we can walk over and we can take a look at this 454 block that was bored here, and you can see how these come out.
That one's 60 over. And the reason this was 60 over is because there was a notch in the a piston broke on this one and it left a, it left a groove in the uh, bore. So we had to go 60 on it. There was no bore wear in it otherwise. And it sounds like our uh, sounds like we're getting down near the bottom here. Yeah, we got we got just a short distance to go here. You see that there? You can adjust this. This is a stop right here. You're gonna see it move in a second. This is gonna come down and contact that. It's climbing. It's coming down on it right now. And you adjust the stop on that rod, and um, you're going to see what happens as it contacts it. It's going to move over, and it's going to shut the uh, shut the boring bar right off. And we are down below the cylinder depth right now. You can hear how the cutting tool stopped making noise, and that's it. Now, uh, the next thing we do. So we got to take this we got to pull this out I don't know why that thing is stiff it's always been like that then we come up here and we wind our shoes back so they're not dragging on the wall and then you just wind wind the machine up and there's your cutting tool and if you need to get it lined up you just you just spin this motor that's the actual motor right there and you're turning the shaft and as you can see it's bringing that cutting tool around so that we can access it. And that's it. That's how you bore a block. So if you have any questions feel free. Thanks for watching.